I sit here now and this feeling starts building within me. I'm thinking, where do I put my hands? Oh no, I can feel it. My face is turning bright red. They can tell. I know they can tell. I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Stop. Don't do this. My heartbeat is pounding and I have a lump in my throat as if I dried swallowed a pill. My hands begin looking like I have an acute case of Parkinson's disease and my leg won't stop shaking. I begin feeling nauseous thinking about my biggest fear. Public speaking. Let's be honest. We all have fears. Public speaking, heights, the dark, intimacy, failure, rejection, dogs, dentists, snakes, needles, being alone, clowns, failing, death, flying, or even spiders. I used to have a huge fear of spiders. I even found myself running out my apartment one day, chasing a man down the street and begging him to come into my house and get the spider out. Please keep in mind this was no ordinary spider. I could see fur on it. So to me, if it had fur on it, it's no longer considered a spider, but a small animal. So there I am on the phone with my sister, and I bend bound to pick up my sweatshirt, and there it is. I screamed so loud my sister said she thought I was being murdered. She wanted to call the police before I calmed down enough to explain what had just happened. Well, what happened next was what I could only have imagined to be the worst possible scenario. The spider crawled behind my bed. Yes, behind my bed. I was acting like a maniac. So there it is. I can see it. It's just standing still behind the mattress. Now, naturally, my mind starts imagining all these different things. Is it going to crawl in my mouth? Is it going to find somewhere to live inside of the mattress? Are, are there hundreds more? Is this the only one? What the hell do I do? Is it going to bite me? How do I get the spider out of the house? And just like that, I hurled the mattress up into the air with the fear that if I waited any longer, I would lose sight of him. Do you know what is worse than finding a spider in your house? Losing a spider in your house. I found him. And there he was, still on the floor. But now what? Soon I was running out the room through the kitchen, ripping open the front door until I found a man who was off in the distance. I ran up to him asking him, will you please come to my apartment and get rid of this giant spider? The hilarious part is, I had no fear in letting an absolute stranger in my house and a man to top it all off, but of this spider. Long story short, he caught the spider and let him outside. As the day went on, I started to think more about my experience with this spider. I even googled pictures of spiders to try and figure out which one was my spider. I also looked into why people are afraid of spiders. I came across a lot of information that went into further details of the fear of spiders, arachnophobia. But this is not what this story is about. So, after reading all this information, I started thinking. Do I control my mind or does my mind control me? Now, for all of you who don't know me, I'm a bit of a control freak. And I wasn't going to let this spider be in control of me. So what did I do? Well, I waited. I waited for the next time I saw a spider and promised myself that I would not be afraid or run from it. I would face my fear because I was in control. It didn't take long until I was presented with this opportunity. Once again, and in fact, I think the exact same spider came back to test me a few days later. But once again, I found myself freaking out and running out of the door. Lucky for me, this time the maintenance man was around and he came in to assist in the removal. He grabbed the spider in the glass, because I refused to kill bugs or let anyone do it in my presence, and led him off onto the porch. What happened next traumatized me. He began stomping on the spider repeatedly as I cried out, No, 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 what are you doing? Tears are pouring down my face at this point. Why, why did you do that? Why, why, why? He said, it's just a spider. But it wasn't. It was not just a spider. It was my fear. And he had killed it. From that moment on, I never feared another spider. I had a new fear. That someone else would kill it. So now it became my job to save them. And that is what I do now. I save all the spiders I see. Big ones, little ones, furry ones, poisonous ones. I don't care. I'm not afraid anymore. And saving them, to me, is what is important. 
Of course, my mother thinks I'm crazy and says, gross, just kill it, Ange. But the way I see it is, if God is watching, I want to be looked at someone who has compassion for all living things, no matter what their size. So, this story brings me to fear. What is fear? Fear is an emotional response induced by a perceived threat, which causes a change in the brain and organ function, as well as in behavior. Fear can lead us to hide, to run away, or to freeze in our shoes. Fear may arise from a confrontation or from avoiding a threat. It may come in the form of a discovery. Why do we feel fear? Feeling fear is simply because you are not living with your life. You are living in your mind. Your fear is always about what's going to happen next. That means your fear is always about that which does not exist. If your fear is about the non-existent, your fear is 100% imaginary. People are always suffering from what either happened yesterday or what may happen tomorrow. So your suffering is always about that which does not exist. Simply because you are not rooted in reality, you are always rooted in your mind. Now this brings us to the 10 tricks to overcoming fear. 1. Awareness Before you can begin overcoming fear, you have to know that you are causing havoc in your life. It's easy to get so attached to your thoughts and feelings that you think they are all that exist, which couldn't be further from the truth. Trick two, the now. What are you lacking right now? When you center yourself in the now, you realize that everything is how it is. You naturally accept that is. Tapping into the now can be as simple as feeling your body and breath. Three, hypnosis. With hypnosis, you can program the right thoughts into your mind and eliminate negative beliefs. This doesn't work for everyone, but it might for you. Trick four, gratitude. Whenever you feel fear, switch it over to what you are grateful for. If you are afraid of public speaking, be grateful for the opportunity to communicate with so many people and that they are there to genuinely listen to what you have to say. Trick five, journaling. Getting your fears down on paper is important because trying to think them through never works. It becomes a lot more clear when you can visually see and address what it is that is bothering you. Trick six, reading. Reading a good book on your specific fear can open new doors on how to get rid of it. If you don't want to read a book, then try Googling what you fear. It has helped me in the past. Trick seven, watching. If you do not enjoy reading, then try watching a movie or a documentary. It can be as enlightening as reading a book. Sometimes it's nice to distract yourself from your fear. Trick 8. Positivity. Whenever fear strikes, flip it over. Instead of thinking of something bad that can happen, think the opposite. If you are thinking about public speaking, imagine yourself being wildly successful instead of failing horribly. Trick 9. Praying. I'm not religious, but if you are, you may want to consider praying for guidance on how to start overcoming your specific fear. Prayer is very similar to meditation. It doesn't matter what you choose as long as it works for you. And lastly, trick 10, telling your story. Tell other people your story about what it is you fear. It may help you overcome it, like telling this one did for me. Please subscribe to my channel, and if you found this video helpful, please like and share.